Okay, this fly is kind of a cool one. Um, it's a slider pattern that I wanted to eliminate all flash from. And so um, I started playing around with, with some materials and just really dumbed it down and uh, used it in Argentina. We, we were fishing brookies, and I know that brookies really like black flies, but like jet black. And so we were fishing a hole. Um, we could see the fish. Uh, they had reacted to almost everything we threw at them. And then I threw this one in there and uh, boom, fish on, almost first cast. And then I hung it up in a tree. <laughs> and then after lunch, the guides got it out of the tree and they kept it. Anyway, so this fly, when I, when I first started tying them, my daughter Mia was downstairs and uh, she said it looked like Toothless from the movie How to Train Your Dragon. And so when I finally looked that up, I'm like, wow, it's, it's like a dead ringer. So here we have the Toothless Slider. Um, for the back hook, it's going to be a Daiichi 2461 in size 4. The front hook's going to be a Fully Mill Streamer Stripper in size 2. And everything we use here is just going to be black. So black marabou. I think this is actually black UV. Okay, so I'm going to take two full plumes of marabou, line them up a little bit, and those are going to be my my tails, or my tail. So I'll tie it in. Usually I tie it in all the way up the body, but I'm not going to do that on this one because this one actually is going to have a few different sections of marabou tied in. So I'm going to trim it off here. Um, now this fly rides upside down. And so with marabou, it just kind of flows all over the place. And I didn't want to put the marabou on the other side of the hook and have it foul up with the hook point a bunch. So I'll show you kind of how I compromised with it and it swam great. So I'm just going to take some plain old black medium chenille and wrap that to the middle point of the hook. Just right here and I'll trim that off okay so I'm going to take another full marabou plume and put that in right in the middle Add more chenille, and then we'll take it all the way to the front and do the same thing. As you can see right here, the marab or the chenille wanted to kind of start tapering down. So if you just kind of wrap it over over the top of itself, it will puff back up. And so usually this fly is done with. Um, ice stub but uh, I wanted no flash but I wanted maximum movement so marabou is my my material of choice for this one so same thing up at the front so I found a nice and bushy one that's gonna go right at the front it's gonna cover basically the whole fly and into the tail So I've moistened down the marabou and I want my thread a little bit further back because I'm going to build up a little bit of a head here. So tie that in and trim it off. And that is a pretty gnarly head up there. As you can see, just kind of cover it up. It's going to be all covered up in thread anyway. All right, good enough for me. So if I run a little 
comb through that, you can see that it's got a lot of flowy proportions. It's going to ride upside down, so all that marabou is just going to kind of be underneath the fly flowing around. So that's a pretty nasty looking fly right there. So let's doctor it up and make it look cool. So what we're going to do is put in the size 2 fully mill streamer stripper hook. Dress it with the same thread at first. I'm going to take a, a double pupil eye and I'm going to kind of figure eight that onto the hook about that far back. I don't know what percentage that is. It's just about that far. And these actually sink quite a bit faster than the pseudo eyes or the eyeballs or balls eyes, whatever you call them. So this will help the fly get down a, a little bit better. All right, so I'm going to take some articulation wire or beadlon or intruder wire, whatever it is that you like to use. I'm going to tie it in. It's a little bit sticking up behind the eyes. And you want to wrap this back a little bit further than you normally would a fly. And the further back you wrap it, the less it's going to foul. Okay, so I'm going to take a single black articulation bead, stick it in there, and put on my back half of the fly. I run that forward and leave about that much room. Um, you don't want too much room, but if you leave too little, um, it won't move properly. So well, that's a good amount of, of space there. So I'm gonna, I'll wrap the wire back up and trim it to length, about right there with some flush cutters, and then just pull those back over themselves so that the wire won't pull out, and just cover that up nicely. Okay, so once I have it to this point, I'm going to coat it in super glue um, just so the wire is like extra secure. And also, I want to super glue that head or the, those eyes in place. Um, this hook is a pretty slick hook, um, it's designed to penetrate fish mouths really well. And so, the, the thread can tend to spin around on it. All right, so as you can see, this is my Renzetti Saltwater Traveler. Um, and I like to, to flip my, my material clip to the side like that so I can use it for articulated flies. Kind of a little Renzetti Traveler hack. Okay, for the front half of this fly, I'm going to build it just like I did the back half. Just take a clump of marabou. Uh, this one's kind of a buggier clump that doesn't necessarily line up exactly because I wanted to fade into that section. And on this one I will take the, the whole piece of feather and wrap it forward. Because from here I'm going to wrap chenille forward and then palmer a piece of marabou at the head. For speed purposes, we'll just rotary this bad boy right about to there. Okay, so I farmed out a really nice buggy piece of marabou with a really thin stem, and I'm going to grab it by the tip. And tie it in here by the tip. Get rid of most of that. And then from here, I've seen a lot of people moisten this or really fuss about wrapping a marabou soft tackle collar. And I'm going to probably do it a little bit more than I normally would at my at my vice or at my my desk. 
but I'm just going to kind of wrap that forward, try to preen it back as best you can, and use pretty much the whole feather. You could also do this with two feathers at the same time and mix colors. So once I'm about here, I'm going to give it, you know, two really snug wraps and then preen it all back. And then come in here and find the stem and just cut the stem off. So I had that much marabou left over. And from here, I'll just do a few more wraps over the top of those, those butts. And if you have a comb tool like this, this CNF one or this Stonfo tool, you come in here and just brush that marabou out and it's almost like you laid each individual fiber exactly where you wanted it to be and it it creates a really nice looking collar so that's where we are so far with this bad boy um, from here i'm going to moisten these marabou fibers and i know that's gross i didn't lick my fingers just for lance or maybe i did and i'll throw a quick hand whip finish and change up my thread okay from here I'm gonna take some GSP thread I'm just using white you can use black or white um, it doesn't really matter because it's not gonna show up at all and uh, what I just tried to do is I like to put just a few wraps on and then crank it down tight and then a few more and once it bites into itself it's not going anywhere it's a really slick thread So as you saw, these uh, Dr. Slick tungsten scissors keep an edge really well, and they, they're great for, for GSP. All right, so this is the part that, that can kind of be intimidating, and I've been playing with a new shape of head for these sliders. I'm going to put a wedge-shaped slider head on it, and for this head, I'm going to use deer belly hair in black. Um, now, one of the comments I get all the time about deer belly hair is on the back of it, it's kind of hardened it's not a really tanned hide um, and that's completely normal for the belly so don't freak out it's not a bad piece this is the easiest hair to work with when you're flaring it okay so a couple things you need to do deer hair work well number one a comb like this one or the, the Stonfo one that I, I showed you that has the velcro on the on the back side of it I prefer this one because the, the the teeth are a little bit finer and uh, the hair doesn't stick to it and you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about um, and also a very very large hair stacker so this is about I think 5 eighths of an inch in diameter or maybe a little bit more and it, the diameter of this is probably more important than the length because the deer has to kind of the, the hair has to separate inside the the, the packer or the, the stacker in order for the tips to align so as you're banging it on the table um, if it's a really tightly packed clump of hair down in that little cylinder, it's going to be harder to align the tips. So, that being said, I'm going to tie this in in two sections or two stages because I want the, the head to be really packed tight. A lot of people say, well, why would you pack a, a head that tight on a, on a streamer? Um, and it's because I'm only putting the buoyant material or the hair on one side of the hook. So it helps the fly keel perfectly, and these double pupil eyes that are lead are going to do just enough to get it under the surface. Um, it's not a really fast plummeting fly. It's more of a suspending fly. Um, but these, these eyes really take care of business more, more than you'd think. So from here, I'm going to get a big old clump of deer hair. I forgot. And if you have... Uh, like a five inch hair scissor like these loon razor scissors it makes it a little easier to dig in and cut the hair off the hide okay so I've got that much deer hair so I'll just kind of hold that for you like that and if I take my comb and start to comb that out as you can see there are little fine fibers in there and that will prevent the hair from stacking and flaring properly. So you want to make sure you get all that out. So I'm going to pass this through here. 
six or seven times. And what, you've, what you see is it's taken out a bunch of the broken fibers. Those don't have tips where I'm grabbing onto the hair. So that's another reason why you need to get a generous clump of deer hair um, is to eliminate any of the broken fibers. So from here, I'm going to grab this clump of hair. I'm going to tilt my, my stacker and put it in at an angle. And kind of gently wiggle that so that it goes down. If I just drop it in like this vertically, some of the hair will fall faster than other hair and it won't align properly. So I'm going to give it a few really, uh, really firm taps on the floor. You can do it on your desk. Sometimes it wakes the kids up. So, when I pull that out of there, you can see those tips are nice and aligned. And I'm going to take my finger and push it through so that those fibers are a little bit easier to grab a hold of. Okay, so... Gross. Um, when I tie this in, I want those tips to be roughly you know pushing back to the bend of the hook looks like I got a few long ones in there but that's fine so I'm just gonna kind of lay that in the length that I want grab that with my off hand and make two really loose wraps around it so that just barely holds that in place as you can see I've got a really uh, neat band of thread around it and from here, when I pull the thread, I'm going to pull it slightly forward toward the eye, and I'm going to put my thumb down on top of the hair. And as you can see, black deer hair leaves, and black marabou does it well, but it paints your fingers. Looks like you've been working on a diesel engine all day. But anyway, I'm going to push my thumb down on top, pull it forward, and it flares the hair out and creates a little crater on top of that so I can tie my next clump of deer hair in. So I'm just going to repeat that process on top of it. Okay, so I have the other clump of hair and I'm going to kind of try to do this with it turned away from me, but I'm going to lay that down into the other cratered hair using the same length that I did last time and I'm going to wiggle that thread up through the bottom clump of hair and down through the other side and I'll just do that two turns is all. So once I have the two turns um, I'm going to pull it without my finger on top of it, pull it slightly forward and don't pull too tight or you'll cut through the hair. I'm just glad I didn't cut through the hair when I said that. Alright so there we have it. There's no hair on the bottom of this fly. Um, it's all on the top. So now I'm going to clean up the bottom of this fly a little bit. It's kind of looking a little bit nasty and I used white thread. So um, here's the key to uh, GSP. If you buy pre-flavored GSP, the color always washes out. Except for black. Black stays in pretty well. So I'm just going to color that with a marker. And now I will take a little tiny clump of Bruiser Blend Junior in black. And this actually does have a tiny bit of flash in it. So I guess I lied. It does have some flash. And I'll just preen those fibers. And then make a little beard. So I'm going to turn the fly upside down. And I'm going to lay this little clump of fiber here, and I'm going to wrap it around the eyes, not around the, the hook point, or the hook. So I'll do two quick wraps. And now instead of whip finishing this, I'm just going to take some super glue and dab it right where my thread last passed. And just come in and trim that off. 
All right, got a little bit of marker on the eyes. Not gonna be a problem. Okay, so now we're gonna cut a little bit of a wedge-shaped head. So first things first, I'll take my comb um, and brush it out a little bit. This is an unnecessary step, but I do it for these wedge-shaped heads because I want the, the hair to be distributed evenly. Come in here and if you crossed up or bound down any of the, the, the fibers, it'll clean them out. And no, no scissor is sharp enough to cut this now. So what I'm gonna do is I'll take one of these Astra blades and as you can see, we just filmed another fly and I used the side that says Astra to cut it. So I'm gonna flip it over and I'll use the side that says Superior. Now on most of my sliders, I bend the blade, but on this one, I'm gonna keep the blade straight and I'm just gonna come up under here and make kind of a pilot cut up at an angle like that. So it's a pretty sharp edge and then I'm going to cut a little bit off of each side. So that's the initial shape that I want. Pretty easy, this razor goes right through it. So from here I get the sides how I want them and now I'm going to go a little bit more aggressive um, through the head, a little bit less of an angle. Because if you can have a, a flat wedge shaped head on this, it's going to dig a little bit better. And I'll kind of round off these eye sockets a little bit. So as you can see, that's a, a pretty nicely shaped head here. It kind of curves down, and that's going to really catch a lot of water and make this fly wobble in the water. Um, so that's pretty much it. From here, I'm just going to come in here and trim up any of the loose fibers. And now you can see this looks like Toothless the Dragon from the show How to Train Your Dragon. So anyway... Caught fish in Argentina, and it's going to terrorize them here in the States.